Hello, this is Geo Techland, and today I'll be talking about the state of gaming on Linux. I'll be taking a look at what games work, what games don't work. So if you've been thinking about making the switch to Linux from Windows, but you've been hesitant uh, out of the fear of possibly not being able to play some of your favorite games, and this video might be for you. I'll also be talking about the kind of uh, performance you can expect from playing on Linux in comparison to Windows, so let's take a look. If you're enjoying my content, you can subscribe to me on YouTube, PeerTube, and follow me on Odyssey. You can also support me on LiberaPay, Patreon, and by shopping at Earth Hero. See links in the description below. I think the most important tool is ProtonDB because here you can see what games already work and you know what games have been recently improved. But this is a great place to check if your favorite game works or is compatible on linux at least when it comes to playing on steam here so when you click on any of these links you'll get an idea of of whether this game works out of the box whether you have to tinker with it a little bit and whether there's differences whether you're using nvidia or whether you're using amd typically if you're using an amd gpu you'll be using the mesa open source drivers for linux versus if you're using nvidia you'll be using their proprietary gpu drivers now if i choose the include native option not only does it show you the games that are running through steam's proton but you'll also see games that run natively meaning that it's not running through steam proton and it's running directly on linux so again most games will work out of the box but there are some games that will require you to tweak a little bit more a good example is resident evil 2 and instead of running it on Steam's Proton, you actually have to run using a custom version of Proton, which is called Proton GE by Glorious Eggroll. This is so that cutscenes can actually play without any issues. And something like that requires simple tweaks like creating a folder in a particular directory and then just loading the file there. As you can see here, Proton 6.1 GE2, and you could install all the files needed here. And then for Resident Evil 2, if you just go to the settings, you can choose the force the use of a specific Steam Play compatibility tool. But just like that, it's pretty simple. And of course, you have the option of choosing Proton Experimental. That will sometimes make it so that you can test other games that otherwise wouldn't work on the latest Proton. But you don't necessarily only have to go through Steam. You can also take a look at Lutris, which is a program that lets you launch games from different sources like from GOG or Humble Bundle or Steam. It also makes it very easy for you to download and install certain tweaks that you can apply for some games that may help with performance. And also you can install emulators here that tweak certain settings so that you can have a good gaming experience. You can also use something like the Heroic Games Launcher to launch the Epic Games Store and be able to download and install games. So a popular game like Fortnite, you could download it, but unfortunately you can't play it because the one thing that is preventing many popular games like Fortnite from working is anti-cheat software. And that's been the big hurdle when it comes to Linux gaming. They've been working on it for a couple of years now, ever since they launched Steam Proton. Although there are a lot of reasons to remain hopeful. And just reading about all the updates when it comes to gaming on Linux, for example, it looks like syscall user dispatch support will be mainline for Linux kernel 5.11, and it should help with getting Windows games to work even better under Wine or Proton. It seems that there's a lot of investment going into making playing Windows games on Linux even better. Sometimes I've been surprised by how well these games are performing. So for example, if you look at Resident Evil 2 here, which I didn't capture the gameplay itself, but I was able to record some footage here. You're getting close to 200 FPS when you're indoors and there's no action going on. Of course, once there's some action, it, it does drop down to like 130 FPS. But this is good because this is in high settings and i'm running this on a ryzen 3600 clocked at 3.9 gigahertz and on an amd rx 5600 xt and here we have gta 5 gta 5 performance is much better as well typically if i'm driving around i get close to around 120 fps sometimes it'll dip to around 90 if there's a lot of action going on and then here we have shadow of the tomb raider 
giving us about 112 FPS on average here. And shout out to the team creating Mango UHD. This is a overlay that you can use to see the game's FPS and CPU and GPU usage here. When it comes to comparing it to Windows, I don't have any hard benchmarks here, but my plan is to eventually start benchmarking and really comparing performance between Linux and Windows some more. For now, we're gonna watch this video here by Laboratorio Neil. Looks like he compiled several videos here from other channels. But I went straight to a game like Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which sees very comparable speeds here. So you got if I pause it, 104 FPS to Windows DX12. It's about even with Windows. So Shadow of the Tomb Raider is one of the few Linux games that was released natively on Linux. And it uses the Vulkan API. And so running natively on Linux, you get comparable speeds to Windows uh, DX12 here. And here you have another example in L Linux with OpenGL. You can see something like CSGO runs at 390 compared to 375 on Windows here. And performance gets even better because Steam introduced something called ACO Shader Compiler that's only available if you're running an AMD graphics card on the open source Linux drivers. So the Mesa drivers in this case. You asked me for a recommendation of what GPU you should get if you want a game on Linux. I would definitely pick up an AMD graphics card so that you can use the open source drivers. And because they're open source, a company like Steam can build something like ACO so that it can compile and it helps with performance. So again, overall, there's a lot of investment going on in terms of gaming on Linux to have great performance. In fact, I'm so hopeful that gaming on Linux will take off that I started a Twitch account where I'm primarily gaming on Linux. So check it out and I'll leave some links in the description below. And of course, I've also got a YouTube uh, for GeoProton where you can catch some playthroughs, walkthroughs, all gaming on Linux. Thanks to Steam's Proton, you can already play many popular games out of the box. So that's very promising. Of course, overall, there's still a lot of games that are very popular that are unplayable on Linux and that's due to easy anti-cheat. I would consider the state of gaming on Linux to be incomplete, but it's pretty close because it's really only like one or two anti-cheat programs that are preventing people from being able to play popular games like Fortnite on Linux. And once that gets resolved, that's going to open the floodgates, I think, for gaming on Linux and we'll get many people using Windows solely for gaming to switch over to Linux. But let me know your thoughts. What games would you like to see being playable out of the box on Linux? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like my video, please like, share, subscribe, and I will see you all next time.